Hi guys, this is Andy from Estella's Revenge. I'm back today to do a little video review of a book that I just finished up. This was a buddy read with one of my favorite bloggers, Heather from CapriciousReader.com. And we had some other friends join in, Chris from Stuff His Dreams Are Made On, Anna from Things Mean A Lot, Debbie from Still Nothing Of Importance, and Kelly from The Written World. I had to really think about who all was in on this buddy read because there were a lot of us. Um, so I'm really excited to talk to you today about Soon Child by Russell Hoban. And this was not a book that I was familiar with at all. Um, it's one that Heather and her great insight and creativity chose for the group to read. So um, it's a really interesting book. I uh, didn't quite know what to do with it when I first started reading. It's very unusual. It's very, very different from what I usually read. Um, I would say it's probably marketed to maybe a juvenile or even middle grade audience. It's about a shaman in the Great White North. Um, we don't know where exactly in the Great White North. I assume we're dealing with like a native sort of Eskimo legend. Um, John does refer to himself as an Eskimo. So we're going to go with that term. <laughs> um, and he, even though he's a shaman, he's a bit of a scaredy cat. So he has uh, a really interesting journey. His child who is referred to only as soon child because she is as yet unborn. Um, she doesn't want to be born. She doesn't want to come out and join the world. And so John has to go on a journey to find the world songs because apparently these songs from nature are what provoke a child into being born. So John has his work cut out for him. Uh, <laughs> he comes up against giant whales that try to eat him. He comes up against this monstrous black hole at the end of the world. And those really aren't spoilers. I mean, those are just trials and tribulations along the way. So the story, I found it, in the end, I found it very compelling. Um, along the way, I struggled a little bit at times because if you're familiar with folklore and you've read a lot of legends and things like that, um, it has all the hallmarks of that. It has animal helpers. It has trials and tribulations. Um, you know, John can talk to spirits and he can go into trances and he can do all of these supernatural things. Um, but the part that sort of threw me off and caught me off guard was the use of more contemporary language and these kind of offhand um, expressions. So, for instance, um, there were a, quite a few what's ups and <laughs> just expressions that I didn't really expect to hear from, you know, this story. I expected it to have more of a glaze of age and a patina of age, um, but really that got shaken up a lot of the time. And I, th I thought that was really interesting. It was one of the things I really liked about the book by the time I was done. Um, visually, it's really beautiful. Uh, the cover as you can see, um, a polar bear is really nice. And inside, it is also illustrated. I did want to show it to you without the cover because it's still beautiful. It has this illustration of hundreds and hundreds of wolves all over the covers. And that was a, a particularly intense scene in the book. And I always appreciate a book that is really attuned to the reader in a visual way. So while the illustrations in this book are all black and white, the pages themselves are actually different colors. So as the book begins, the pages are a nice sort of light bluish gray color. And as we move through various episodes in the book, they change and they get darker into like a gray color. And then toward the end, they get really dark. And it's the actual physical pages. It's not just the illustrations. Um, and as we come back out to the end of the book, they are back to like this kind of neutral grayish blue color. Um, and so if you look at the spine, you can see, I don't know how well you can see it here, but there's just like this little shift in hue to the pages. And I thought that was really, really clever. Um, a clever way to show mood as things sort of start light and then they get darker 
uh, up to the climax and then we come back out into the light so really clever stuff um, you know by the end I was really invested in John's journey um, and I was really I got a little teary I'll just say it I got a little teary at the end uh, with the resolution so a fun fun book and there were some things that really made me perk up like um, there were some bits that seemed to me like they might be things parents wouldn't want to to have to explain to their middle grader um, for instance in a very large tornado like situation um, two people in the act of love pass by and you, you there's nothing graphic you just see their feet um, go by but little things like that seemed like call outs uh, little elements of intertextuality that would apply to other works of literature so the inferno comes to mind first thing when I when I hear that because there was a section of that in one of the circles um, from Dante's journey to hell where there were two lovers caught up in an eternal storm um, and it very much is that kind of a journey that kind of supernatural paranormal epic journey for John to go and find these world songs for soon child so I would not be at all surprised if Russell Hoban did that on purpose I have not read any of his other stuff um, I believe he is deceased now uh, but was very prolific had written many 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 books so if you read anything by Russell Hoban feel free to let me know what I should read next. And uh, I hope you all are having a great week. I hope you will grab a copy of Soon Child if you have a chance. And I will see you soon.